We're going to talk about something called um, trauma, trauma medicine. Uh, and the terror attacks in Manchester and London have not only highlighted how hard the NHS works, but just how stretched they are as well. Yeah, with trauma-related incidents, the biggest killer of people under 40. That's quite something when you think of it, isn't it? Mm. Uh, a campaign has now been launched to raise needed funds for research. Now, two people know all about this. Our leading trauma surgeon, Professor Kareem Brohi, and a rap artist and friend of the show, Professor Green, um, whose life has been saved not once but twice by trauma doctors. Uh, good to see you, particularly look, good to see you, uh, Stephen, I think the, I think, after that. Yeah, not, not once but <coughs> twice. But twice. But, Look, I think the first thing we've got to do is people who say, what, are we what does this word trauma mean, Professor? Yeah. So trauma is very difficult for people to get their head around until you actually start to think about it. But uh, in reality, it's being injured. And then it's the consequences of being injured in terms of both how it, what it does to you physically and mentally. So most of this diagnosis of this would take place in accident and emergency, would it? Well, it happens first on the street when the first paramedic gets to you and... Uh, you assesses you know what's happened to you tries to work out you know how badly you've been injured but then it goes right the way through emergency departments into operating theaters critical care units and then of course once you've saved somebody's life you have to rebuild that life you have to reconstruct their body you have to rehabilitate them and, and the effects it has on on their body and on their, uh, their and mind. as we said well. Stephen you have experienced this not once but twice would you care to relive or recount that for us um, in the first instance, it was a random attack in a nightclub. Um, someone come up behind me and put a broken bottle into my face and neck. I knew I'd been stabbed. I pushed my way out of the club. Um, we ended up fighting outside the club and were split up by police officers. And my phone had come out in the fight. And I think because of shock, I was really calm at the time. Um, getting poked in your neck is not something you normally... You can see the scar It's there. not something you normally walk away from. Um, and I asked for my phone. Someone passed me my phone and I called my nan. I didn't think I was going to... It was, I felt weirdly responsible, even though I wasn't. And I felt guilty because my nan had done so much, you know, to bring me up. Could you feel your life ebbing away? Could you...? Um, I just, I don't know, I thought in my weird sort of calm state, and it definitely was shock because there was, there was no other reason for me being calm in that situation. It's not felt like something I'd encountered before. I just thought, you know, that's it. I'm not going to lie here kicking and screaming. I'm just going to take and, it. And the second time was a car accident. Yeah, I got really lucky that time. I mean, you know, doctors didn't, in that, in that instance, have to save my life um, or actually operate. I, I avoided a really serious accident. I got hit by a car that caught me in the back and then smashed me into another car, but I managed to get up on the bonnet. So the only thing that got caught was my left leg. If, if it didn't, it would have been my hip and the thing, and that the thing he was surprised about was when he was brought to hospital, they weren't concentrating so much on his leg. They were concentrating on his pelvis. So that's where you guys come in. We see the obvious. What are you looking for? So we're trained not to see the obvious and to focus on the things that might kill you. Uh, and so the things that kill you, no matter how you've been injured, whether you've been stabbed or whether you've been in a car accident, are you're bleeding to death, you've got a big brain injury, or various other things. So we're trained to go straight for those. And then um, after that, we can start to look at things that are left, less life-threatening, but mainly people disabled. Well, we were talking earlier, you saying that um, you started this campaign, Transform Trauma Campaign. What needs transforming? Why do you need to raise funds? And why is it underfunded? So, I mean, we're raising funds for medical research because essentially it's still a huge killer. 50 people die every day from being injured in this country alone. Six million people around the world every, every year. Um, about 200 people are left severely disabled every day from trauma. And, um, frankly, the research that has been done so far has been rather piecemeal, and we're just beginning to get to the grips of understanding what's going on with patients so that we can actually begin to develop new treatments. You, you need not only uh, surgeons like yourself and the medical staff working and, and uh, on the patients at the time of trauma, but you need a kind of research team observing do you to then say, well, how can we lessen trauma and how can we help people recover? Yeah, understanding what's going on with people and then bring, developing new treatments so that we can make pe save people's lives. And, you know, we've been doing that. Uh, we've halved mortality over the past 10 years from critical injury but still one in three people uh -huh. are dying. But the way you're doing that, uh, just to explain to people, is that time is your biggest enemy. The clock is, is running. You know, when someone like Stephen arrives in hospital uh, with you, the clock is, is running against, and you've been able to develop things like how to stem blood flow. 
Yeah, so we've had a big research programme which now we're beginning to understand the problems with blood clotting that trauma patients get and now we're beginning to develop new treatments, new clotting products and we're evaluating whether they can start to which buys you save time. lives. Well, it buys time and it actually heals people mm. as well. It That's stops well. them bleeding. But why is it so badly underfunded then? This is, you're saying 50 people die a day from trauma. Why is the money not there for this research? Uh, I think it's a variety of reasons, but a lot of it is simply because of the problem with awareness. People don't equate being hit by a car, being stabbed, falling off a ladder, falling at home as the same thing. They don't equate a terrorist mm. event... Um, to a child being knocked over in, uh, yeah. in a third world country. Which is where you come in, Professor. Um, you've set yourself a target. You need to raise a million quid. How are you going to do no that? No small feat, is it? Well, well beginning, it begins here, really. It begins with the appeal that launched yesterday and we're also doing a show on the 9th of September. Tickets go on sale next week. It's really just about raising awareness. It's, it's letting people know. It's something that if you don't encounter yourself, you're likely to know someone who is going to encounter trauma in, in your lifetime.